everyone. Today I have with me author Michael Alexander. And Michael has written two books that I've read, um, Risen from Ashes and Love Lies Bleeding, which are both from the seas of, and I hope I don't say this wrong, Elysium. Is that good, Michael? Okay. (laughs) Okay, awesome. Um, He wrote those books, and I loved these books. Okay, and I am so happy to be able to talk to you about them because they, they, to me, this is like a world that I wish I lived in because I love the, you know, I read, (laughs) I read a lot of fantasy and then I, and, you know, a lot of sci-fi and a lot, and some of them takes you like very far away and you have to learn different planets and you have to learn, but this is like, this is like real life and then there's this other world but it's like they're combined, and as I was as I was reading it, I was like, "This is how I want the world to be," and I'm almost convinced maybe somewhere there is a place like this. <laughs> you just yeah, don't it know. Could be. It could very well be. It's possible. You know, I, I, I want to believe that. I want to believe that there's this other world like that. But um, oh, <laughs> yeah, just to, you know, catch everybody up on it. Um, the main character, Lauren. Is it Lauren or Lauren? I was like, wait, did I say her? It was Lauren, right? Uh, yeah. Actually, the main character is uh, is Phoenix. Oh, Fe- Phoenix. Okay, and then right. his wife. And then, and then his wife Lauren, and and she, you know, she compliments him. He compliments her. They're they're actually. I don't want to say they're both main characters. You can't have two main characters, but um, she plays a huge role in his in his uh, character development and everything that goes on in the story. Yeah, and I don't even know. You know, even though I've read both books, I don't even know which one I should read first. I read Risen from right? Ashes yeah. first. I wrote I wrote Risen from Ashes first, and then okay. I was going to jump right into the sequel. But at that point, so much had changed in the story development. I'm like, I need to take take a step backwards and and really get a grasp on on this world that you that you described, <laughs> because mm-hmm. it's it's so big, it's so world building, it's so humongous, and it, it didn't start out that way, but it developed into that. And I'm like, I, I really need to take a step back and, and figure out what's going on here. So I wrote Love Lies Bleeding, which is actually takes place prior to Risen from Ashes. But there were so many there were so many events and so many characters in Risen from Ashes that, that readers were asking me about. They're like, Well what about this guy? What about this girl? What about this event? And it's like, Well, if I talk about it in the main series it's gonna distract from the series. So what I decided to do is do a breakaway series. So if you notice, um, on Love Lies Bleeding, and it's actually under the title Legends of Elysium. And so mm-hmm. that's just a breakaway series of stories that complement the main series, and they, they weave in and out, but they stand alone. Yeah, they do. Right, exactly. And that's why it was like, I, it, you know, not giving – I don't – I do not want to talk too much about the, you know, the ending. But right, it's hard when I to. read <laughs> – yeah, I do not want to, but right, but I, when I read the next one, I was like, okay, so there are some crossover characters, and then I'm like, okay, right. so this happened before, and so that's why we, then I started to think, well, maybe I read them in the wrong order. Maybe I should have read no, this no. one first. There's but, no correct order, and, and, and okay. you know, the, the, the main banner is Thieves of Elysium, but then I did a breakaway series, Legends of Elysium, because in, in Risen from Ashes, you meet Conradin, who's the, the shadow thief, and... Um, you don't really know much about him. He's in the shadows, and you just kind of get a glimpse of him, and he's got the big scar on his face. And and Lauren talks to him, and hey, you know how you been? How you been? How you doing? And you're like, well, how did he get that scar? And why is he so jacked up? And and then mm-hmm. he's the main character in Love Lies Bleeding, and you find out exactly what happened. So he goes to um, he goes to Mythos, and which is another world inside the story. <laughs> you have. You have, you have our world, which is reality, and then you have mm-hmm. you know, the, the secret underground, you know, utopian city inside the Himalayan mountains. But then inside Elysium, you have a gateway, per se, into another land called Mythos. And so mm-hmm. you get a glimpse of Mythos, which the book that I'm working on now, the sequel to Risen from Ashes, about half the book takes place in Mythos. So you're really going to get a huge, um, you know, picture of what's going on there. Well, I'm sure that everybody begs you to get to the sequel of Risen from Ashes because yeah, I know I, that I cannot wait until the sequel. <laughs> I can also write uh, <laughs> but I'm trying. And I mean, I, that's I, a great I just problem to have. Out of the next book, so 
I'm sorry. Yeah, and it's it's a great problem to have to have people begging you yeah. to write the the sequel. You know, like that's right. every author's dream. But I have to tell yeah. you, when I was reading Risen from Ashes, and I was reading, I started reading it on my Kindle. I usually don't, but I was waiting for these books. For some reason, Amazon screwed up one of my orders, and they were supposed oh, to no. come, and they didn't. And I was like, well, I have to start reading this you know, now. Like, I, I don't want to wait. And, and so I'm reading it for my Kindle. I could not page fast enough because oh, at wow. one point in Risen from Ashes, you had me. Like, I was like, what? <laughs> well, that's good. I'm, I'm doing my job. Yes, you did. Because, you know, it's like... and, I, and I find it interesting. I really like that you thought that Lauren was the main character because I, I love Lauren. She's amazing. In fact, you know, she, she's a lot of, lot like my wife. So <laughs> a lot of her personality oh. comes out. But, right. Um, and she, well, I did think Phoenix strong... was until. <laughs> yeah, she's things. such a strong character that it's just amazing. And I love, I love her storyline in the series as well. But then, Hi. you know, like you, like you said, we don't want to give away the ending, but if, you know, you, you get to the end and you know the warning that they received, well, it actually, you know, some stuff happens and, and it changes, it changes a lot of things. So it's really hard to not talk about it and talk about I it. Know, I know, <laughs> but we're not going to. But I have to tell you that, like, I love what you did with her because, you know, it starts being about Phoenix and, and you know, and right. I got really into him and I was like, this is so cool. This is so, you know, and, and I could really picture him and all his struggles and what he was going through. And then all of a sudden, like I said, when you hit me with Lauren, I was like, what mm-hmm. is going on here? Right. But then I was and like, it is crazy. It is let so. Me, let me tell you, let me tell you a story about that. When I, when I originally wrote this book, it was just it was just Phoenix and then the, an, an opposing character Marco. It was just the two of them struggling against each other, and I can remember to this day I was driving I was driving down the road, and it was as if I, I was in the driver's seat and it was as if I was also in the passenger seat and I leaned over and I whispered in my ear, and I said to myself I said Lauren is a such and such, mm-hmm. and, and I almost crashed my car. <laughs> you were like oh. No I had no idea. It was a revelation to me. I'm writing the story, and I didn't even know it. And I'm like, wait, Lauren's a what? <laughs> that completely changes the whole story. And like, you know, you know what? Wow, without that. Involved in, and it was amazing. But what what I like is that here you have Phoenix. You have the strong firefighter, and, and he's spent his whole life just saving yes. his life, always being in control. And then it flips. And now yes. he's got him. He's completely. He's you know he has no idea what he's doing. He's way out of his league. And Lauren steps up and says, "Hey, this is what I do." <laughs> I know. I know. It was crazy. Yeah, I love the part where she. Very well. Yeah, and exactly because you know he's like he's going to save the family. He's going to be the guy. You know, like and right. you're like all into that. And then all of a sudden they're in a helicopter and she's like, or an airplane or something. She's like, you are going to jump. And he's like, what? I'm jumping out of an airplane. Like, I love that (laughs) scene because it did. It totally flipped their relationship into she's now in control and telling him what's going to happen, you know? Exactly. So anyway, it it was, yeah, it's incredible. And without you, without that, I don't even know what this book looks like without her. So I'm, I'm really happy that. That your other self told you because I, yeah, I don't. Me too. I'm glad the story uh, <laughs> told me, and, and I think that's important. Though I really listened to your story because it, it really, um, yeah. I mean, you kind of you kind of box yourself in and say, "This is the story. This is what I'm going to stick with." And uh, the story kept telling me, "No, there's more. There's more. There's more. Open the door. Go down that path. See. Take a look." <laughs> and the more I, the more I allowed myself to listen to the story. All of a sudden, this gigantic world opened up to me. New characters, and new places, and new events, and new plots. And wow, I mean, the direction of where the story is going now from where it originally started is night and day. It's a completely different story, and I love it. It's it's amazing. Right. So let me see if I get this correct. This other world that takes place outside of real world is kind of Uh, in not the Middle East, but you know, when I was thinking about it, when I was going to talk to, I'm like. Was I correct in thinking it's like in Turkey, or is it outside of like it's this other place, or or is it nondescript and it was just about where they were traveling to or through? Sure. Are we talking about are we talking about Elysium, the city of Elysium, or Mythos? Um. Okay, because you know what? Now that I'm thinking about it, I guess Elysium. Mm-hmm. So a 
Elysium is, is, a, is an actual city that is underneath the Himalayan mountains. I can't tell you where because <laughs> it's secret. But, um, yeah, so that's underneath the Himalayan mountains in Nepal. So if you remember, they, they fly to Kathmandu, and then they yeah. they go into the yeah. mountains. And, that, and that's when she's like, no, we got to get out of the plane now. <laughs> and pushes right. Okay. So that's – okay. So now I'm understanding. So, so that's so what Elysium that is. is inside the mountains. Okay. Underneath, you know, it's an underground city. And the caves and that then, they were in and all that stuff, yeah. Right, right. Right. And so okay. now you have that utopian thief society that's been around since the Crusades and they've you know, they've dug deeper and, and further underground and developed this gorgeous, amazing, incredible city that everybody would want to live in. Mhm. But what you learn in you know, little parts of Risen from Ashes a lot in Love Lies Bleeding and then there's a lot more in the next book that I'm working on, you learn that there's kind of a, there's a gateway, a portal, a door, kind of like, you know, it'd be like going through the wardrobe and walking into Narnia. It's it's this portal into mytho. That's kind of what I thought of, too. That I actually had that yeah. kind of vision when I was reading it, yes. And so it, it's guarded by a gate, the gate of Sharon, and then you know Sharon is the, the guardian of, you know, he takes the, the dead souls to the afterlife, so Sharon plays a part in the, in the story, too. So there's a gate, and then you walk through that gate, and you end, end up in mythos, and then I described a lot of it in, in Love Lies Bleeding. You know, what is mythos? How, how did it get mm-hmm. there? And mm-hmm. It talks a lot about all the mythological creatures and all the magic and everything that was in the earth before the flood, the antediluvian age when the earth was young and full of magic and full of creatures and dragons and, and all that. But they had to go somewhere when the flood happened. They didn't die. They all fled to mythos. So, so now you've got this amazing world where anything can happen. And, and humans are actually... You know, we're not the predominant race, and we're greatly outsmarted and outstrengthed, and it puts the thief that goes into that world at a huge disadvantage, but that's where they're going. <laughs> okay, so I have to ask you. Okay, so, look, and, that, and then while I'm reading this, like, your knowledge of this stuff is incredible. Was this something that you really like to study? You know, like, the research that you did, I mean, was incredible. I mean, I learned so much. I knew... Some of the stuff, you know, I knew some of the myths and some of the gods and goddesses, and right. but I mean, I, I could tell that you were using a lot of of stories that people knew and sure. putting it in there, you know, like and right. and I was like, was that something that you really loved to do? Was read it those is. myths? And a lot, a lot of it has to do with my upbringing. I mean, I I, I bring so much to my writing, but I didn't start out wanting to be a writer. I I, I mean, I. I was interested in the arts. I had a creative side, but, um, you know, cre- creativity or the arts wasn't necessarily encouraged in my home. It wasn't it wasn't discouraged, but it wasn't something you did. Mm-hmm. So, you know, so when I grew up, I, you know, I, I went into emergency rescue right at, at 18, right out of high school. I did that for several years, and then I joined the Air Force and became a medic, and then I was a pre-med student for four years, and then I was a firefighter for 10 years, and then my degrees are in political science and diplomacy, So I just, I have this huge background, and then all of a sudden, I'm going to be a writer and write fantasy. So I have all that to build upon, and I I had a great childhood. I mean, my my childhood was like Peter Pan. I mean, I just lived adventures every day, and so I had that to fall back on. But then I also have, I just, a natural interest in in history and world history and ancient history and mythology, and then then I'm I'm also um, a Freemason, so I have... You know, just access to older books. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so I get to see a side of the world that most people have forgotten about, basically. And I do, you know, I read, of course, I read a lot. And I was just thinking the other day, because I had been reading a lot of fantasy, you know, kind of in a row. And I was like, oh, I got to take a break from fantasy because I'm getting them confused. And I'm, you know, right. and I start reading your book and I'm like, oh my God, now this is this because it, it's both. It's not like I had to memorize. I mean, sure, there's the other world, but then there's this world. Sure. And I love the way you combined it. I really did. Oh, I, yeah. I have to say, if it would have just been in the fantasy world, I don't know how interested at that moment I would have sure. been. I was like, you know, sometimes fantasy gets taken to levels of like, <laughs> of too right. much fantasy, if you know what I mean. Right. But the way that I you combined the both is like, it was crazy. That's what I loved about it. You know, and I love that they were real life characters and, I, you know, that you could relate to. And, sure. um, 
you know, but then I also, I love, I love the history part of it. And, you know, so that spoke to me too, because it wasn't things that I didn't know anything about. It's like fantasy, right. but it's also with some truth in it. And, and sure, the way you sure. combined it, I loved that. Loved oh, it. Thank you. I, want, I, yeah. wanted, I wanted to create something new, but something familiar. Yeah. So I was able to combine the two. <laughs> yeah. But, you know, growing up, I, I mean, I grew up with Indiana Jones and Star Wars. And, yes. But, you know, more, more focusing on, like, Indiana Jones, I always liked that it was, it was based in reality, but there was just a little bit of supernatural or a magic where you'd go, yeah, I guess that could happen. That's possible. Right. That's <laughs> yeah. what I'm saying. I'm not convinced yeah. that there isn't this place somewhere. <laughs> right, you know? right. And and when I actually, when I started Risen from Ashes, I had really pulled back from that. I'm like, no, this is just going to be strictly in reality. There's not going to be any magic. There's not going to be any supernatural nothing. And then I and then I allowed myself to do, well, okay, I'll go as far as maybe Steven Spielberg or George Lucas and just do like a, you know, just a kind of, well, maybe it could happen, just a little bit of magic. and um, But I still felt like I was limiting myself. I was limiting the story. And so that's when I really took that path and said, okay, I'm going to open this up and see where it goes. And and so more magic and more excitement came into the story. Not not overdone. I don't think I don't think it's overdone, but um, I don't either. Enough enough to to wear it balanced out the reality. So you got you know half based in reality and half based in you know the supernatural or the magic. But it's still it's still like wow you know that could happen. You know that's yes. from way long ago that used to be here that's no longer here, but it's still here. You just have to find it. Right. I think that that's what it you know it really holds on to me for because I'm I'm a huge history person and and even you know some of the biblical references and all that I mean it just satisfies my whole like right. oh this is still okay. all connected in some way like maybe this is all still connected and it's not the past as much as it is the future and I don't know right. it's just you know right. it's oh, really yeah, connected no, I, with me yeah, I understand oh, that's great because that was my intention you know to blend all of it together and it's all interlinked and yeah that's amazing yeah, and I see here on LinkedIn that you were also interested in acting, too. Oh, yeah, yeah. So I do acting as well. I do theater acting. And, uh, you know, it wasn't until later in my life, after I was already a firefighter and I was already, I'd already finished my master's degree, but I always felt like I was searching for more. It wasn't, it wasn't what I wanted to do. I mean, I, I did, I followed in my parents' footsteps, which is a great thing. My dad was a police officer for 30 years with LAPD, and my mom was a nurse. And, you know, they, they set a wonderful example for us of serving. And, and you know, they, they, they served their community and their country, and they did a great job. And I just followed in their footsteps. But it really wasn't, it wasn't true to me who I was. I, I really wanted – all my life I'd been a storyteller. I just had no one to tell stories to. <laughs> so right. They were all hit in my head. But you right. know, once I finally uh, realized that you know this is what I want to do, I want to I want to write stories, I want to act stories, and and so um, yeah, so I wrote the books, and then I I started writing the screenplay. I put myself through screenwriting school, and then I'm like, gosh, you know, I, I want to act too. So I put myself through acting school, and this was all after my master's when I said I wow, school again. I'm so done. And then, but it, it was something I wanted to do. It was fun. So I didn't think of myself as going to screenwriting school or going to acting school it was I'm really doing what I want to do and so it was enjoyable I looked forward to it every day but everything complements each other I feel like as an actor I can I can write better because I understand you know the role of the actor and how much they can transform into the character and how much they can carry the character and you know their input and then I understand from a writer's point of view you know, you can't you can't have dialogue that goes on for 20 minutes and have some poor actor say it. <laughs> you know, it's like, right. you know, so I, I like I like um, dynamic dialogue in my writing. It's you know the back and forth and what one person says, how it affects the other person, and how they're going to fire back and say something, and but at the same time move, progress the story forward. So I think all of that is has worked together to to make a good story. You know what, I think, and now that I'm thinking, because I, I didn't know that you had gone to screenwriting school, and I was thinking when I was reading it, the the thing as a reader, and, and you have to understand how many books I read. <laughs> I am not your average reader, because I read a lot of books. <laughs> I wow. read a lot. Yeah. So, but anyway, as I was reading your book, I was like, you have the style of reading that a reader, I mean, a real reader, I really prefer, because you you move the story along with very little your chapters are short 
and every right. chapter moves it along. And now that makes sense that you went to screenwriting school because that's exactly how screenwriters write. And sure. it totally yeah. it, it, that totally helped you. You know, and it, I love, I'm the yeah. same thing as you. Like, I've done screenwriting classes online and just because I right. like it, just because I think it's fun. But I think it's helped right. my reading, to tell you the truth. Yeah, oh, I, I think that, yeah. you know, I really do. I think that it helps me really pick up on some things that I never thought about before. And right. um, you should, are you writing the screenplay for these? Uh, the, the screenplay for Risen from Ashes is done. And then oh. once I finish um, the next book, I'll work on that one. <laughs> But it, it was I, funny how, how it progressed because I wrote the original book and then I thought, oh, I'll just send it off to publishers and uh, they'll publish it. And, you know, I got a bazillion rejection letters, but they were all encouraging. They're like, you know, it's a really good book, but, you know, you're a new writer. We're not going to take a chance and all that. But they would always say, but it reads, it reads like a movie. It reads like a screenplay. It does. Thought about, have you thought about writing it as a screenplay? And, of course, at the time I'm like, yeah, I'd love to see it in a movie. I don't, I don't know any screenwriters. But, yeah, eventually. And then I thought, well, shoot, if I wrote the novel, I can write the screenplay. So that's when I decided to put myself through screenwriting school. And then I wrote the screenplay. And then I took the screenplay, shopped it around. I went to a bunch of pitch festivals. And I got such great feedback. Everyone's like, wow, this is amazing. It's world building. It's huge. It's, you know, it's all this great stuff. But we don't know you. You're an unknown. And you don't have an audience. So build a fan base and come back. <laughs> oh, oh, and by the way, have you thought about writing it as a book? <laughs> so, <laughs> Oh, my gosh. You're not the first point, author that I've heard that from. Yeah, so go ahead. <laughs> it's like, okay, all right. Um, so from that point, you know, actually, you know, being being a proactive person that I have been, being in the military, being a firefighter, I'm not one to just sit around and wait. So I'm like, well, I'm just going to publish it myself at this point. And that's, you know, what I did with that for, for now, just to, just to get it out there, just to get it off my desk and on the market while I continue working. So... But, well, uh, and, I, mean, uh, I would love to see it as a movie as well. <laughs> yeah, and I I've talked That's to publishers. It for. Yeah, and I've talked to publishers lately because the publishing world is so different than it used to be in the past, and right. they are actually very proactive in searching out self-published stuff that yeah. gets slipped through the cracks. So right. you just, I'm really happy that you did self-publish these. Um, I think that you know, who knows? Like, I, I can't imagine, yeah, exactly. and you know, who knows? And and this is what I love to find. I'm so glad I found your books because I, you know, I will promote them to the most that I oh, that one you. person can. But I know that it's like there's so much talent out there, and right. you know, I love the art of writing. You know. Yeah, and then, you know, actually, the the writing is the easy part. It's the marketing. I just I, I get such great feedback on my books, but the problem is, is nobody knows they're there. <laughs> they just get married, right. you know. So yeah, that's 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 the challenging part is marketing it and just telling people it's here if you want it, you know, check it out. Well, yeah, it well, I mean, I'm I'm new to the game. I understand that. I, I didn't, you know, I haven't been doing this for 20 years. I, I've been doing other things. I've been saving lives and and doing other stuff. So I'm just I'm I'm brand new. I'm the new kid. So I got to pay my dues and and just keep writing. And and actually from from other writers that I that I follow that that I respect, that have self-published and have gone on to great stuff, the best advice mm-hmm. they ever gave me was just keep writing. Don't yep. waste your time or your money on marketing or advertising or networking. Just keep writing more books and, and build up your, your catalog. So that's, that's what I'm doing. Uh, absolutely. And, and I have a suggestion that I found just recently, you know, that I came across is that um, just from, you know, talking to as many authors as I do is you should create an author fan page on Facebook. Oh, I have one. Oh, you do? I didn't find it. Uh-huh. Oh, oh okay. I will look well, harder. There's, there's two. I mean, there's there's Michael Alexander as as me as the author and the actor, and then there's a Thieves of Elysium Facebook page. Oh, awesome. I, I don't know why I didn't see it, but perfect, well, they, because that's what, you know, I will be posting your stuff on. And I found that oh, those, right. those audiences are very faithful people. Like, they're the oh, ones yeah. that are going to be bugging you constantly to write, keep writing. <laughs> Right. And, you know, and that's the thing is, like, I, I, I'm i telling you that, that it's the fact that you already have the screenplay out for, you know, that it's there for when people want it, because this right. is a movie. This is a movie. Oh, I, I mean, yeah, I wrote it that way. I want it to be I want it. And it's a series and it's going to go on for quite a while. I mean, the the, the main series, the Risen from Ashes, the next book, there, and there's there's about three more books in that main series. And then Legends of Elysium, where the love lies bleeding, that can go on indefinitely. I mean, it can just oh my go goodness on forever. 
And then right. I have a whole other series. After after Phoenix and Lauren are done with their adventures, I have a completely different series to take off of that. So it, it's going to go on for quite a while. And I just found your page, and I just signed up for it. I don't know how I missed it before. I'm sorry. I really, oh. like I, I thought that I'd look for it, but, yeah, it's there. And, yeah, that's the thing about um, series writers. Because this one Canadian author, uh, she's a woman, and this woman writes like crazy series. She has like five going at the same time, and she oh, has wow. like these. She has these like post-its on her walls. Okay, I mean she was she seriously she was so crazy. She was awesome, and she said that the that was the advice that she got. The first advice she got from somebody when she decided to start writing books is they said do series work, and right. she said she is forever grateful. And when I read books like yours, like, I'm like, thank you for doing the series because I love series. I think that they are the best for, for me as a book fan because we don't want it to end. We want it to keep going, you know, and we want to go into those different characters and, and see where they can go. And, and now that you've created the world, it's like, why walk away from that world? That world is amazing. Like just keep going with it, you know? Yeah. And that's kind of why I split the series, too, is because I have met a lot of people that want the series. They want it to just keep going forever. But then I have met a lot of people that want, I just want a standalone book. And that's what Legends of Elysium is for. But right. if you like that book, you're probably going to want to get into the series. So uh, Yeah. <laughs> It'll be, trust me. You, you can read you Love, Life, Bleeding and just be done with it. But no, you can I, be like, well, what's all this other stuff going on? Well, and you don't read Risen from Ashes and say, oh, okay, I'm good. You're like, no, oh, no. where is the no, other one? No, no, no. <laughs> no, that that was designed to be a series. You, you get to the end of that, and you're like, you, you got to be kidding me. <laughs> right, exactly. <laughs> but, you know, yeah. I'm just so happy. I'm so happy that I came across you. I'm so happy that I got to. I am so off. happy, too. I was thrilled when you contacted me. I'm like, wow, I've never been interviewed before. This is awesome. <laughs> well, that's good. I'm I'm really happy. That's what, that's what I like to do is, like, you know, to put – put authors just like you that do amazing work and you know media is great and it and it like it travels it just goes really fast and who knows you right. know so yeah. and I, I like to be there well, at the I've beginning the and then I can I'm say, waiting for the wildfire <laughs> right right and then and then I like to be able to say I knew him I knew him right <laughs> well you, you can say that you gave my first interview so that's right I'm so happy about that and I will have it's all of yes and I will have um, all your links um, to your LinkedIn, Facebook. Are you on Twitter? Uh, I am on Twitter. And I also okay. have a, a, a website, too, just for my author website. Okay, awesome. I will put all those links. And, and I'm not a big on Twitter, so that's why I always ask people, because if they're not on, I usually don't go on, because yeah. I haven't figured that one out I yet. I don't do a lot of Twitter. I am on Twitter just because it's a necessary evil. But I, I link it to my Facebook page, so whatever I post on Facebook just goes to Twitter anyways. And I don't Perfect. That's twice. perfect. Yeah, I'm not, you know, and like you said, we could spend all our days doing media, but, you know, I'd rather right. be doing what and I'm and doing. And it's funny, I actually, I did for a while. I just, all I did is chase contacts and try to meet people and, and run around, and I thought, this is a huge waste of time, and all the time I had spent did nothing for me, so I'm like, I really need to be writing another book. Yes, so yes, and you know what, I always, seriously. yeah, and you know how I always feel about it is that someday they'll be chasing you, and that's the right. better way to exactly. have it. You know, like when you'd rather they be chasing, you just keep writing and they will chase you. So, you know, anyway, but anyway, thank you so much, Michael. This is amazing to be able to talk to you. And um, I can't wait to, can't wait. Keep me updated and I will, I will post whatever you want me to. Are you, do you go on any book tours? Do any, do any signings or anything like that? I haven't, I haven't yet. No, I mean, I'm just trying to build my reputation and get out there and get enough books to actually have people sign. So. Just right. The thing about self publishing is I gotta buy my own book. So to buy a stack of hundred and yeah. <laughs> so people can sign them. I'm just like I said, I'm I'm new to all this, so right. it takes a while. I, I I look forward to it, I fantasize about it my first book signing, but I haven't had it yet. Well, it it will be it will be there, trust me. This is this is good stuff. So I can't wait to talk to you again when the next one comes out, okay? Yes, please. Yeah, like I said, I, I just finished Act One and I'm hoping I'm really pushing hard to have it done by summer. Perfect. But, um, Perfect. Know, then we will chat again. Actually, it's much larger than Risen from Ashes and Love Lies Bleeding, so it's it's going to be a big one. Oh, awesome. Awesome. Well, thank you so much, and we will talk soon. Perfect. Thank you. Have a good okay. day. Okay. You too. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.